Fearscape Media Network, exploring the unknown, one podcast at a time. Fearscape Media Network is your new home for everything weird and enlightening. Check out podcasts and YouTube shows covering content from discussions on horror films to the paranormal to meditation. Find out more at fearscapemedia.com. Thank you for tuning in to Fearscape Paranormal Podcast. We are on a journey to understand and to discover the phenomena that seems to exist all around the globe. We invite you to join us on this journey into the unknown. inspiring episode of Fearscape Paranormal here on the Fearscape Media Network. I am your host, Josh Rutledge, and I am joined, as always, by my doppelganger, Stefan Gearhart. How are you, sir? <laughs> uh, I'm doing okay. I feel like I should... My name is Josh Rutledge. I like to I read like books I... by audio. I feel like I should change the level of my... I like my voice is too deep to be stepping on it. Hey Josh, I'm doing great. <laughs> How, uh, wait a minute, what are you trying? What are you trying to say? What, what are you trying to say? Uh, no. Uh, no, but no. Thank you guys for tuning in as usual. I am actually Stefan Gearhart, if you couldn't tell by my um, smooth, velvety tones, uh, and of course Josh here, um, begrudgingly um, following my lead tonight. Uh, we have a fun show as we usually do. Uh, at least I hope you think so. That's why you keep tuning in. Uh, we've got a fun show tonight. We are going to have a getting spooky episode uh, with someone really, really cool. Uh, and we pre-recorded this and it's a badass conversation. I'm just going to put it out there right now. Uh, this is the guy that was the uh, the guy that was the first person to release the rubber duck video. Uh, Andy from the uh, NY UAP discussion Instagram and YouTube page. Um, <laughs> just yeah, just buckle your seatbelts, ladies so, and gentlemen. I mean, I'll, I'll say it too. If you know, if you're if you're more on the lines of like you know cap and you're like language, uh, just there might be a couple spots where you're like, eh, but it's good. Stick around. You're going to enjoy the conversation. Yeah, we we loved it. Um, and uh, just a lot of really great information. And Andy's just um, an amazing dude. Uh, so you'll want to stick yep. around for that after the segments. Uh, but speaking of which, you know, we got to get into those. So we got to do our shameless plug as usual. Go to fearscapepodcast.com, fearscapemedia.com. Check out all the other podcasts for the Fearscape Media Network. And then while you're on fearscapepodcast.com, you can hit that slash button and then type in store or type in support as ways to uh, help support us, whether it's buying merch or uh, supporting us monthly or yep. buymeacoffee.com slash fearscape and uh, hook us up with a one-time uh, gift, you know, so that Josh can finally get a haircut. Yep. It's been a little bit. Uh, in the famous words of Stained, it's been a while. <laughs> I don't think that's what they sound like. No, it's ch pure chin rock. Okay. It's been, it's been a while. Uh, but yeah, those are all the places you guys can help us out as well as, of course, you know, hitting up our sponsor, Manscaped, Fearscape 20 hit it and rate and review oh my yes. goodness it helps rate and so review. much yes you know, there's 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 an algorithm it's called the matrix and um <laughs> not the it, one inside optimus prime no no that one is used to defeat evil no this this algorithm though it, it like takes rates and reviews and stuff and it says hey uh, these people like this maybe other people would too and it moves us up on the pages of suggestions and things when people look are looking for new podcasts so yep. and it's perfect um, since uh, uh apple podcasts and spotify are our two biggest subscribers uh on apple you can rate and review and on spotify i believe you can only rate uh but still hit us yeah. up with that five star it helps. goes a long yeah. way um and anywhere else that you can do that do so um because i don't know yeah, we don't, it makes me feel better about yeah. my life 
We don't have a Yelp, but somebody could go create a Yelp for us and then write it there if you want. <laughs> that would be cool. A uh, shout out to listener John Matthews. Again, uh, we did his story recently uh, from the UK. This man went out there and rated and reviewed Fierce Game Paranormal. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, but we're becoming fast friends because of Doctor Who and Red Dwarf. I'm just letting you know the discussion has changed, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, no, I always love to give shout outs to our blanket huggers out there when they uh, rate and review. We always appreciate it. We love you guys so much. Yep. Um, but let's get moving on. Let's get to our first segment of the week. Psychic word of the week. And now, the psychic word of the week. Psychic word of the week comes from the Encyclopedic Psychic Dictionary from June G. Bletzer, PhD. Rest in peace, honey bear. I love you, even though I never knew you. I know you're here. Let's ghost it up. Patrick Swayze me. Um, <laughs> so I flipped through the pages and I stopped quick this time because I was like, man, we don't hit a lot of A's. So I flipped through yeah. A and uh, I got to um, Alpha State of Consciousness. And mm. so Santosh, I know you're listening. You know a lot about this. Um, so uh, biofeedback training is in parentheses here. And it says a brainwave frequency of approximately eight to 14 cycles per second as registered on the brain rhythm scale used with the electroencephalograph <laughs> instrument. <laughs> I was also, like, I was like, I also, know this word. also called an EEG. Oh, thank you. That's way easier. Um, one, universal characteristics of humans that register this state, awake but not actively moving about, resting, relaxed, composed, meditative, approaching the hypnotic state, or becoming less alert to outer stimuli than normal. Two, an awareness of invisible emotional reactions, psychic information, and inspirational thought. Three, to use the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds alternately unintentionally shifting back and forth uh and of course followed up with beta waves you know that's why i say you know santosh i think was the first one to really uh teach me about the different states of consciousness um uh and finding uh actual i think when we worked at barnes and noble back in the day and uh finding cds that actually had alpha brain waves and things like that to um help with meditation and stuff like that built in it's pretty neat well, you know, um, when we talked about Robert Monroe last week, mm -hmm. um, and that's the, pretty much the state that he would go into before he would have his out-of-body experiences. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in Arizona. That's the, that's the state I'm in. You're not in a state at all. You're in a commonwealth. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, okay. Uh, so moving <laughs> on. Of, yeah, moving on. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our next segment, which is got some hilarious <laughs> spooky news. <laughs> Oh, Josh, do I have some hilarious spooky news. It's amazing the alerts I set up on Google Alerts for me and then what stories show up. Um, I have Satan and Satanic on there just for shiggles and occasionally like an exorcism story will pop up or something fun, but not as fun as the story that I came across today uh, here on WIVB.com. Uh, this is WIVB4. I have no idea where this is at. Um, but the headline reads, the headline reads, Woman protests Spider-Man sculpture as satanic hate crime against the church. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get you, Spider-Man, you menace. Uh, oh, Lincoln, Nebraska is here where it is says a woman is fighting the city of Lincoln, Nebraska over a sculpture she says depicts devil horns at a local zoo. According to CNN, the woman demanded that the city remove the sculpture in a written complaint to Mayor Gaylor Baird saying, It is a sculpture of two hands open, painted red and black, and formed into devil horns. This is anti-Christian and demonic and completely inappropriate and offensive to place in front of the children's zoo in the gardens where couples are married. 
She added that the statue was a hate crime against the church, according to the Lincoln Journal Star. City officials responded that the sculpture is not a city issue and is one of 50 installed throughout the city as part of a charitable event called the Serving Hands Lincoln Public Art Project. The nonprofit's group director, Matt Schulte, said he was surprised by the complaint since the sculpture's colors correspond to the costume worn by Spider-Man. The six-foot Spider-Man sculpture was installed in May. Schulte said when the installation was taking place, it didn't have the spider webs attached, and maybe that's where it got misunderstood. Uh, because I believe all it is is a sculpture of the hands with him pressing the insides there. Uh, so it looks like he's rocking out. Mm. But his thumbs are out, which uh, means I love you. Yeah, I mean, I I don't really know other than them being red how it could be. Yeah, it's, it's just... because she sees the bullhorns, which, you know, satanic rockers always did for the bullhorns. Uh, you know, oh, it's the devil. Um, but if you stick the thumb out, it's I love you. But if you press them middle fingers in a little harder, it's web time. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> people are reaching. People are reaching. People are reaching. And this is fantastic because what we just talked about is going to fit right in with our right conversation in. with yeah. Andy. Uh, I didn't even realize that when I pulled this story earlier. So I love how yeah. that works. Uh, but yeah, that's our um, spooky, and I'm doing air quotes here, spooky yeah, news. Spooky news. This week, but it cracked me up, Josh. I had to share it. Um, so, but let's get into some actual uh, spooky news type stuff and get into our Bigfoot sighting of the week. All right, we've got our Bigfoot sighting of the week. Uh, again, probably one of the Jersey Devil's friends, uh, as he tends to hang out with a lot of, of Sasquatch type folks. Um, it's just it's just the gang he likes. He's the short guy that likes all the tall guys with him, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, Napoleon complex of things. So. Exactly. Yeah. But he <laughs> runs the show. He does indeed run the show. He's yeah. not even here right now. He's actually in a bowling league with a bunch of Sasquatch. Yeah. I wonder what it's called. I, I don't I don't know. I can't I'm not quick enough to think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause I like Sasquatch and roll. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Sasquatch us bowl. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, yeah, mm -hmm. big Bigfoot sighting. <laughs> what do we got? Gotcha. What do we got? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> this actually happened uh, back in November, November 29th, two thousand twenty-one, last year. You know, last year, yeah. um, and uh, uh, I. I, th I think this will be the last time I make that last year joke. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. Anyways, I think you got one more week. One more week. So um, this has actually been making the rounds on various uh, news sites and stuff. And um, uh, most of those sites don't have the, the full details. And so I went out to BFRO, which is where it came from, and, and pulled the full report. So here we yeah, go. Yeah, I'm glad you did because, yeah, this even popped up a ton in my spooky news uh, Google alerts. So yeah. uh, I'm excited. All right. Hit me up. So it's from the witness. Uh, Saturday night, I was driving at 10.30 p.m. in Central Illinois, heading from Cass County to Tazewell County. A car was probably three quarters of a mile ahead of me, and I could see their taillights. I saw a large animal jump into the road about 40 yards ahead. When it hit the road, I could see very large legs spread wide in a dead run with large, swinging, hairy arms. The arms switched back and forth close to the ground as its body was leaning forward. It leaped across the road in two jumps. When it hit the shoulder, it looked back at me. I said to myself out loud, Fucking Bigfoot! It was about two seconds before it vanished into the darkness altogether, but I could see it clearly. It was very large, and even though it was haunched over nearly horizontal, it still was close to being wider than my car and nearly to the top of my windshield. It blocked out the lights of the car ahead, 
It had shiny black hair. I could not see eyes or mouth, but saw its head turn towards me before it jumped into the dark field. Also noticed it was running and leaping very fast, nearly as fast as a white-tailed deer. Its gait and or stride was huge. Also noticed it was running and leaping very fast. Then we have the investigator's report. Oh, cool. So we get a follow-up. That's definitely something I have not seen in the news stories at all. So it says, uh, this is from the investigator, Matthew Moneymaker. (laughs) All right. Okay. Shake your moneymaker. Anyways, um, (laughs) this is a very uh, reliable sighting. I spoke extensively with the witness by phone. Um, uh, The individual is 59 years old. He has been a design engineer for the past 38 years, designing parts for custom welding machines. He is married and has two kids in college. He was not particularly interested in the Bigfoot subject, but he recognized what he was seeing. He was driving 70 miles per hour and didn't slow down much until he reached the next town. He kept going, then stopped in Havana, the next town, to text his wife and kids to say he had seen a Bigfoot crossing the highway. He was driving north, and the figure was running frighteningly fast across the highway from left to right in an open field. He commented that the pin position shown below, there's a map included. If you go to BFRO.net, you can see it. Um, Maybe off somewhat. He thinks it happened a bit further down on north on 78, further into the open field. There was no cover on either side of the road at that point, so it's impossible for him to pinpoint the exact crossing point. He agreed to make a sketch of the figure so it could be added to this report later. He was surprised that this was the first posted visual sighting report for this county, Cass County, Illinois. But he noticed the next county to the east has 13 posted reports, and the county nearby to the north has 12 posted reports. He noted that Cass County is very sparsely populated, only about 12,000 people. I love this because every every story that I have come across, um, the big thing that it mentions immediately is reliable sighting um and uh, that's not something you you see very often in in sightings like this but it is in in, like all the headlines it says very reliable sighting um and that's pretty impressive uh you know and this isn't very far uh from you know missouri It's, it's it's not very far from the ozarks and places like that uh so there's definitely a lot of action in that area heavily wooded uh, why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, one of the cool things that it did mention here um, in this sighting is it said that um, uh, the member also said that while this is the first reported sighting in Cass County, that there are 13 reports in neighboring uh, in one neighboring county, um, which is very, very interesting because you're like, are you crossing county lines there, bro? You trying you trying to cut away from the Cass County police? And go into a different <laughs> jurisdiction. Well, it's Cass County might be dry. Maybe he's heading to right. a bar. <laughs> That's where he was heading. He was just heading to the bar, man. <laughs> could be. Could be. Uh, there's also a theory that I saw on an article that said that there um, there is a YouTube documentary called The Sasquatch Theory uh, that released a video about a possible sighting near Mark Twain Forest in Missouri. It's not too far from there, uh, really, at the end of the day. But they wonder if, if these two incidents could be related on the sightings. And I say, why just that? Just because there's a documentary? Missouri has a ton of sightings as does Kentucky uh, and Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana. Wayne Barnes was Southern Indiana. I mean, he had a ton that he investigated all the time. Uh, Rest in peace, my friend Wayne. Um, But yeah, very, very cool. Very reliable, uh, which I I love. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's just, and this is a class A, right? So they break, BFRO breaks them up into class A, class B, class C. Class A is like the best type of sighting you can have. oh yeah i mean this dude saw harry without the hendersons i mean that's like swinging across the road reminds me of the story santa should i tell you that we heard about the monkey cat in taylor county you know kentucky things like that very similar of these families yeah. that saw these things with the large swinging arms the whole nine yards slash kitten caboodle so but yeah <laughs> thank you josh for sharing that with us and uh let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and get to andy and the uh uh, from the ny uap discussion 
Support for Fearscape Paranormal Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Cheers to 2022 and resolutions you can actually keep. Unlike trying to get a gym membership and using those medicine balls, Josh, how about upgrading your grooming routine for the new year? Our sponsors at Manscaped are here to make the ball drop into 2022 the cleanest ever, making your balls as smooth as medicine balls. Set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code FEARSCAPE20 for 20% off plus free shipping. It's a new year and new me with the global leaders at Nail Grooming. This year, take your grooming to the next level with their Performance Package 4.0 and brand new ultra premium body wash. Ooh, you smell good. Have wild hairs come out of your nose or ear? Well, Manscaped can solve the problem too with their Weed Whacker. This nose and ear hair trimmer uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system to provide proprietary skin safe technology, which helps prevent snicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Keeping your ears and nose as smooth as medicine balls. Polish off new your stellar routine with free gifts, including the Manscaped Shed Travel Bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs to keep all your goodies while you're being stellar around Uranus (laughs) stored comfortably. Kick discomfort and poor hygiene to the curb this year and use the best tools for the job. Cheers to grooming with the best of the best of 2022. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Fearscape 20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Promo code Fearscape 20. It's new year, new me in 2022 with Manscaped. Keeping those balls as smooth as medicine balls. All right, welcome back, everybody, uh, to Fearscape Paranormal. We are back, like we said, with Andy from NYUAP Discussion Instagram YouTube page extraordinaire. Uh, Josh, I'm excited. You excited, buddy? Oh, I'm I'm definitely excited because I feel like it's been like what an oh, episode since we talked about UAPs. I mean, it's yeah. it is, <laughs> it is because last week we talked about out of body experiences. Yep. Uh, week before that, we did t- well. Well, we did. We talked about the Rendlesham, Rendlesham Forest. Forest. So yeah, yeah but, but those were UFOs back then. So yeah, was, it's not UAPs. Um, we're we're whatever. talking UAPs <laughs> now. Uh, but Andy, thank you so much for joining us tonight, man. Not a problem. It's a pleasure, guys. Uh, so we're super pumped, man. Uh, you know, we've been following you for a while, uh, especially with the uh, rubber duck video. Um, I think that's how we kind of took notice there a little bit, um, which was pretty remarkable. Um, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and drop it right out the gate. How were you the one that stumbled across that bad boy? Oh, my God. The story behind that is <laughs> <laughs> if you if you've been following me, you know what I've gone through because of that video. So yeah. <laughs> it's been it's been hell. I mean, at, in one way, it, you know, it was a good thing. But in the other, it was like, oh, my God. Oh, I bet. I got well, you know, Josh, it, so I understand. You know, it's, <laughs> well, you know, the thing that really gets me is, is number one, uh, I don't know how you have time to post the stuff that you post. Like, that must be your full-time job is just keeping up with your Instagram posts. But, um, but the you know, I, I like that you share a lot of content and you let your followers kind of describe, you know, decide what they're willing to believe and what they're not willing to believe but unfortunately those people who are unwilling to believe attack you for it and oh and so, they stay unwilling that is yeah, something i yeah. learned so. yeah i get i get i get attacks all the time i've had multiple uh reddit threads made of me i mean it, it you name it you've said it it's just ridiculous I mean, and that's that's probably one of the things that is like the most frustrating when it comes to this subject is like why why it, like what what purpose is there to attack someone 
trying to get the same information everybody wants out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, and it's, you know, it, what really is, I guess, a, mind boggling for me is the people who go on these accounts and attack you and others like you. Why are they there? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's such a great question. question. <laughs> <laughs> and let me let me add this because I will say these folks, and they're not all skeptics. Some of them are believers, but they only want to believe their own way. But regardless, they I equate them to very fundamentalist evangelical Christians that will very much like come at you and want you to believe or they want you to believe what they believe so hardcore but the second you invite them to your religious thing they say oh hell no <laughs> no that is the devil you know or whatever it may be yeah. it's like but there is no shake in them yeah um they deal with it every day I, I feel like there's probably a, a psychological paper here for you know for <laughs> Like some psychologists listeners need to like put some time and effort and studies into why people who are like adamantly against something will follow it on social media. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure somebody some you know somewhere is is studying that or, or writing a paper on it. <laughs> I've actually had um what was it last week I had a professor from France message me asking me for permission to use the footage on a. Uh, presentation he was doing with some engineers and stuff so that oh, was oh wow that's awesome but um to go back to the question real quick um so i got i i, I got the footage um uh, apparently there was a uh department of homeland security agent who was following me and <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well from what he tells me there's multiple so i i only know of him so far but yeah <laughs> other ones that follow my page as well but mm -hmm. You know how it is. Nobody's really willing to come forward. A lot of people are always afraid because of the stigma and, you know, how they're going to yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look at them, you know, reputations and stuff. I mean, my wife, every day I deal with that. <laughs> I deal with it every day. I've been, I've been dealing with it since <laughs> 17, 18 years old. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> but so, yeah, so he, you know, I just, I received this um, message one day on my Instagram and, you know, this individual um was talking about that he had some uh, uh it was a it was a cell phone clip at first that he wanted to show me that he thought i would find interesting he said you know he felt like sharing it with me that he liked the way i presented my uh my content that he liked the way i you know you know just didn't give a shit you know what i'm saying uh, yeah and felt comfortable sending it to me so you know once i got it i i saw the clip he, he had recorded it from his cell phone it was on this uh his actual computer from uh from his office and when I saw the footage, I was like, holy crap, you know, like, this is yeah. awesome, you know? Yeah. And it, it, it took a while, but I was able to convince him to, you know, go and uh, actually get the original files from the uh, DHS server. He was a little nervous about it because, you know, yeah. you can't plug in a USB drive into government stuff. <laughs> you <know? laughs> unless you're Snowden. Why do you got that big stack of writable DVDs there, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Making them out to the garbage, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so he, he actually ended up getting them and he, he sent me the original files. He showed me all the proof of who he was, um, showed me the... Um, the location on the computer you know where, where they had those files mm -hmm. they they had kept them in in this folder because you know it, it was three videos it was the rubber duck the uh the a10 warthog and um mm -hmm. la bruja and they 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 had them in there because no one you know no one could no one could explain what they were you know so it would go around the office and people would see it and they try to figure out oh, what is this what is this and it was unexplained you know so he sent it to me and the rest <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's been it's been it's been interesting do you because regret it i don't regret it no i don't regret how i did it because um like regardless of how you know people were, were upset because i teased it for a long time and you know i would never put anything out and i hyped it up and you know what i hyped it up because i knew what i was looking at Right. I don't yeah. Care what anybody says, I don't honestly could give a rat's ass what anybody thinks. Like, it is what it is. This person came to me and trusted me with the footage, so that means I, I must have been doing something right. You understand? Yeah. Regardless well, it, of 
you just making you just making sure that it got its due due attention, right? Because I mean, yeah, it's a exactly. pretty it's a pretty substantial video. Yeah, yeah. you, you know, know it's and, not a Batman balloon, you know. So exactly, <laughs> and, and listen, I and we had people from the moment I released it on Twitter, without any analysis, we had major UFO researchers come out and say, "Oh, that you know," I mean, bashing me right out the back. I'm like, why? Like, like take the take the time to analyze it before you go and, and automatically begin ridiculing me yeah. or what? Because you didn't get the footage first? Yeah. Because it didn't go by your by, by through your hands first. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what you think. This is the problem, in, in my opinion, is the problem with this subject right now, is that you know you 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 have all these people that claim to be these experts that that they want to be the leaders in this subject they want to get their hands and you know into the cookie jar and and, and call mm-hmm. themselves you know uh the 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 go-to guys for information but at the end of the day none of these fucking people nobody fucking knows what any of this stuff no. is. You understand what i'm saying how could you be an expert in something that's unidentified exactly you know and then you you have individuals you know i'm not going to mention any names but i I'm, I'm pretty sure people know who I'm talking about, <laughs> who who have this crazy truck outfitted with all of this equipment that, yeah, he's going to go out there hunting UFOs and I got this, I got that, you know, but then you don't want to use any of the thousand dollars worth of equipment that you invested in to analyze legitimate footage that came out of the Department of Homeland Security that's over 40 minutes long. Does that make any fucking sense? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, how ridiculous is that? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think you're probably right. There is probably a, a little bit of kind of the same way that people, um, believers who believe their own certain thing about what the phenomena is, there are probably also people who are um, investigators, right, who have their own methodology of doing investigation, and so when something goes beyond or outside of that again it's it's like a i'm right in i i have the right path i've got the magic golden ticket i get to tour you know willy wonka's factory but um i don't know why I, I'm going with that. I haven't mentioned he who shall not be named in a long time but stephen greer is that uh yeah. is the perfect example of that he is the i am the way the truth and the light to aliens and if you don't come through it through me it's not correct and it's that kind of same idea i think joshua you're talking about that there are there are ufo investigators ghost hunters all kinds of stuff like that that if if they aren't the ones that discovered it found it and went through it then it don't count yeah that's and that's I, I it's sad because we see that all the time when we should be collaborating and working together there's still this competitiveness uh in this arena that shouldn't be there but you yeah. know one of the one of the things. Sorry, right, go ahead, Andy. No, no, go. I was just agreeing. Okay. Well, one of the things that I, I think is very. We've talked about it before, Stefan. Is how hard it is to trust footage because of the number of fakes mm-hmm. uh, that are produced all the time. And so, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I sometimes will be scrolling through Instagram and I'll see a UFO footage video. I'll be like, "Wow, that's amazing!" But then in the back of my mind, I'm like, "Is that fake? Is that real?" I mean, it's just. You know, it, it's it's really hard, and in, in, you know, it, I think we're at the point where, like, even if somebody had footage, you know, everybody else always talks about, I won't believe in aliens until they land on the White House lawn. Even if we have footage of that happening, somebody would say it was a fake. Well, it's absolutely, flat, it's the flat Earth syndrome. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and plus, with you know the the, the way technology is now, is like, you know, we, there's there's now the the internet is so full of doubt now. It's like you can't trust anything you see, you know. Yeah. And I've, I, I mean, I deal with it all the time. There's footage that just, uh, I mean, I, for for years I thought was real, and and I mean, incredible videos. I don't know if you remember seeing one uh, uh, video that showed these like uh, four white orbs that that kind of came into view while they were looking at a uh, like a nuclear uh, something mm-hmm. like. A, uh, some some nuclear facility you know what yeah. i'm talking about yes that video is one of my favorites i mean absolutely incredible i found out it was cgi oh and not only found out i actually went, I, I i was actually sent the link to the individual who created it and scrolled through the page and saw the process how he did it i was like you have to be kidding me why I'm like, like, it's like i do that though it's like i don't understand why that's that disinformation I mean, it, shit and it's like you wonder if he's getting paid by the government to do something like that, you know? You know? 
I mean, cool. um, the one that really blows me away, and I recently watched a, a little uh, a short one-hour thing about it, is the pyramid over the Kremlin uh, back in 2009 and the pyramid over the Pentagon in 2018 that looks very similar. And I've watched that. I've watched it several times. And, like, the one that uh, is in the Kremlin, like, you see, like, power lines pass in front of it and stuff. And I'm like, if this is CGI, sub- I mean, somebody did an amazing job. And I can't believe nobody's claimed it as look at the look at my example of my work that I did. Well, I, I actually I actually did a little like investigation into that. And the, the, the Pentagon one is one I can say I don't I don't honestly I haven't found anything that points to that being a fake because there was multiple footage. Yeah, there was like four. There was like yeah, four was, different vantage yeah angles that were and, and not only one not only that i i found one of the originals that was filmed in the car and it um you know the, these whoever was was driving took turns and everything was coming around and this object was still in the same spot yeah so i i can honestly say that that one might be legitimate <laughs> but it's hard to come you know definitively yeah. that it is but based off of what i saw and the fact that you know there was three different uh uh uh, individuals who filmed it from different perspectives, I kind of, I come, I'm getting the impression that that was actually legitimate. Yeah, I, and it's like Josh said, it's like, you know, if you're not being paid to do this, why are you doing this, right? There, that's a big question because you think about accidental ones, right? We live in the internet age now, so there shouldn't be accidental ones anymore. Whereas, like, you know, like the McPherson tape, for example. Um, was one of the first found footage movies ever made and things like that so much, but it was back before internet. So it got passed around, ended up at UFO conventions as real footage and all the shit because people just didn't know because it was this low budget indie film uh, and mm-hmm. things like that. And I can almost let be like, I, I understand. I've seen it. It scares, it's even now watching it, it's kind of creepy, you know, but it's like, I, I understand that, you know, because there was no internet, there was no shit. But now it's like, there's so much information out there. We should be able to find out, just like you said, and then you you can. You can find out, and when that that makes things a lot more untrustworthy, and it surprises me the amount of videos that I get sent from people that I know immediately are such fakes. Like, not oh. even close to being fakes, but they're like, oh, my God, Stefan, I know you're into this stuff. <laughs> Look at this video. And I'm like, dude. But you know, but hold on, I got to cut you off there. You know, you, you brought up a good point, and there's something that's really, really important about that is the amount of gullibility that is out in the world that people do believe a lot of these yeah. videos are real. Like even ones that when we see are are like this is clearly a fake. There are a lot, and it blows my mind because I see it all the time. I follow pages that I put on blast for posting bullshit all the time, and I read through the comments, and there are people that legitimately believe these videos are yeah. real. Yeah. You know, that's just Not weird. just one or two people, but thousands of people. Because yes. I do the same thing. I follow them, too, and I especially these ones that people send me, I'll go to those Instagram pages or Twitter and I follow them back and back and back to all these other boards where they're posting. There's hundreds of thousands of other people that are like, oh, my God, this is incredible. You know, yeah. and I'm like, guys, it's so, the, the spaceship from Flintstones ahead because it's, like, it's got black yeah. drawn lines. Around. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't even white out the, you know, the. Uh... Tra- Look, there's Fred. Like, he's right. Yeah. Still there. So, uh, but, you know, it kind of speaks, though, I think a little bit of volume too that. Uh, the number of gullible people that there are that that these people want to believe right they've read the right. poster i want to believe um and unfortunately they so desperately i think want to have their own experience that they latch on to just about anything that's out there yeah well i'm, I'm you know to, to touch up on that like you know a lot of people say that they're ready and they're ready and i could tell you from experience i've said it a million times on different talks you know conversations i had on live it might be 2022 but people are not ready they're not ready like i've i don't know if you guys have known you know heard my story but i you know i've actually had a close encounter and i'll tell you from experience to see in front of your face from 100 feet away it looks like real life cgi like i can't there's no other way to explain it it looks like real life cgi right in front of your eyes because it's doing things that you know you, your mind can't wrap around yeah 
So when they say, oh, yeah, I won't believe until it lands in the front of the White House, the White House lawn, even if you were standing there and saw it land on the White House right. lawn, your eyes are still not going to believe you because you know, of we, how incredible it is. You know what I mean? Like, Stefan, you talk about the, you know, we've, we've referenced it lots of times on the show, but about how when the uh, ships came from Christopher Columbus and other, you know, European settlers that a lot of Native Americans did they talk about how they probably didn't even see the ships because they couldn't process yeah their brains couldn't process something like that they had no idea what they were looking at um and that and that comes we talk about this a lot too is that and that may be why also some people don't see something but other like there may be three six people there three people see the thing in the sky but the other three are like i don't see anything um you know that their brains may not be able to wrap around what it is that they're seeing because they can't handle it they can't process it like it's like a um i don't know like they're blocked the, like it's like yeah a, like, well, a, but like a defense mechanism to like, a good a good example of that is the um the the fatima incident where all the, yeah. the thousands of people yeah. showed up and when you, you know, some said they saw something and others said they didn't see anything, but everyone was in the same spot, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a perfect example of it, you know? Maybe they weren't ready to, you know, or they just couldn't understand what they were seeing so their mind wasn't able to register it. Right, so. and I've said before, we've talked about this a lot, that it, that paranormal experiences i equate them to like um all of a sudden you get a jeep and you see jeeps everywhere all of a sudden that it's that same thing you have that paranormal experience and it like unlocks that that block oh, in your head that says now i recognize this you know because most people that have a paranormal experience it's rare to meet anyone that only has one like <laughs> it's like they once it's like once you got one it's it's game time well it's yeah it's opening a door you know like you, yeah it's opening a part of your mind because right you you a lot of people don't understand like you know you wake up your your, your daily routine uh you know revolves around just going to sleep waking up eating your breakfast going to work doing whatever you do you know what i'm saying like that's that's your life yeah that's as much of reality as you as you know you know what i'm your saying three foot world you know what i mean and outside of this is an entire universe that is go things are going on at every second of the day right now something incredible is going on somewhere else right like people can't register like people like they just don't have the ability to understand that <laughs> like like my, my like my wife says when when i talk about some of this stuff she says uh, you make my brain hurt yeah, so my, <laughs> wife, my wife says the same thing. But it makes you wonder if some of those people are the ones that are attacking because they're uh, unintentionally jealous that they can't experience something like that. That they're mad, and I know a lot of skeptics are. You know, a lot of times believers were skeptics first. Well, a lot of skeptics sometimes were believers first that have not had any proof, and it's frustrated them, and they didn't get the experiences of all the people that they've talked to and expanded. Just turned them into skeptics. Mm -hmm. But, you know something I also have been kicking around a little bit, and we kind of we kind of just touched on it a little bit, opened it up a doorway. You know, is that um, when you have your own experience, it's like an initiation, and uh, you know now you're in you know now you're in the groove, or you know you're going to start to because you know, there's uh, myself, you know, Stefan, we saw something in my backyard like two years ago, and it set me you know completely different path spiritually and. And uh, and kind of you know <clears throat> doing this podcast and all the stuff that's come from it. So um, you know it's almost like having your own personal experience is like the jumping off point from what are you going to do next to really start to expand yourself, your consciousness, other people around you, so on and so forth. Yeah, I agree. But um, what you know, the, the, another one of the frustrating things was when this footage was released. You know, you you're going back to the whole CGI thing, you know, that's one of the reasons why I was so excited because, you know, this is legitimate footage now that is been confirmed. Like, yeah. like this is real. Yeah. You, know what I'm right. you have, you know, I, I, I know I get shit for it all the time, but you know, you have the Tic Tac and you have the go fast, you have the gimbal and it was one only seconds long, not even a full minute. Right. You know what I mean? and, and that was all over the place. And, you know, and I don't care about fame. I don't care about money. I have, I, I had offers to, to get that footage taken off my hands and I, I turned them down because, you know, that's not what I, that's not why I do what I do, you know? I'm trying to do it because I want to get the, the information out there 
the right way, you know, because to me, as soon as money's involved, it taints the subject, you know, now, yeah. you, you, there's, which is unfortunate, something else, you know what I mean? And which is unfortunate, it. right? Cause yeah. Cause they're automatically, if you're trying to make money from it, it, it must be fake or it must be false or you might exactly. be a fraud. Or... Which I have always said is bullshit because <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if I got haunted at my house and I got raped by a ghost and crazy shit happened, you better believe if somebody says, I will give you $4 million to sell your story, I will say yes in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, not, not because I made up this story, but because hell yeah, it's four million dollars. Yes, you can have my story. Even if it was four hundred thousand dollars. If it was four dollars, I'm gonna sell you my story. I can get some Kool Aid and some chicken Big and waffles, Mac. man. Like I'm good. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's like you know, you always hear that, especially about famous ghost stories from the '70s and, and '80s and things like that. Oh, they were uh, this obviously was a hoax. So obviously, they were trying to make money. And I'm like, who thinks it's a, let's go? You know what, honey? Let's put our family through emotional trauma for about a year and a half, two years. Let's let's go to doctors and just crazy stuff on the hope and a prayer that somebody might pay us for our story. Well, you know, I mean, I understand what you're saying, you know, but like, for example, look at, you know, the whole situation with Greer. Right. Greer, I followed him for, for many years, you know, I, I looked up to yeah. Greer. You know? I Same. thought he was amazing at what he was doing. <laughs> Until I until I tried to go to one of his things and then realized they wanted four thousand dollars to go. Oh, it's mm -hmm. it's up from there. It's like yeah, it's like ten grand now. Oh yeah, you know yeah, what I'm I live in I live in Phoenix, so it, you know he's right around the corner, and I see these events all the time, and it's insane how much. Yeah, it is. I mean, like that. Just think about it, you know. And to me, the, this is how I look at it. And like I said, I, I get your point and what you're saying when it comes to these things that make them money. But again, you know, when you when you look at it, that's that's the way our civilization. Yeah. Is, yeah. Right. You know I'm so I don't want to be associated with that when it comes to this, because you're talking about the greatest subject, the most important subject in the history of mankind, the history of our existence. The fact that there may be another race or multiple races out there that may potentially even be the reason why we're here. And right. To turn that into a typical profit making, you know, topic is to me like, come on, you know, this is this is bigger than that. We need to, this is this is it's one of the reasons why we're still stuck where we are, because that's the mindset that we're always going to have. And if we don't break from that, how do you move forward? Yeah, in evolution I mean, because and yeah, and you're right. And it is. And and once they do kind of get a taste of that money too, I mean, like I, and I, you know, I love Lou Elizondo. I got to give him credit for pushing the narrative. But a second we heard about his book coming out, we stopped hearing him sharing information, you know? Exactly. And, and so that, so I do, I get frustrated with that too, because yeah, it's like you had a noble cause, then you realized there was money and then you were like, well, shit. So I'm like, so, and then the same with Greer. Like I follow Greer for a long time. It's the same thing. My God, the early stuff that he did was so incredible. But yeah. when this cult leader thing kind of happened, like where he wanted to be on the opposite side of what Lou and Christopher Mellon, those guys were preaching, that's that's when it went shit. Yeah, uh, right. And, yeah, and it, it sucks because he was he was a pioneer that really pushed some some lines. And, and now that's now it's gone. Now he just looks like another cult leader. Greer was Greer was the the the, the very first person to actually push disclosure in 2000 what was it one or 2000 yeah. with uh with the press club uh yeah stuff. i mean yeah. think about that you, the, yeah. he pulled that off in the early 2000s yep. you know what i'm saying like he had all these people all these major individuals come forward talking about it and then i don't know what happened you know it's again money gets involved and it taints it and ruins the subject yep. well, you know? it, i'm glad well, he brought he, up that lou thing because i thought as soon as that happened I was like, oh my God. I already knew what, what, what people were going to say. Yeah, I, I did too. I'm like, why are you going to announce a book knowing that you have this information on this topic that we've all been waiting years to find out about? Yep. Now you're not going to tell it until we purchase your book? Yep. Well, you know what, what I'm saying? Like, come on. What really gets me is that uh, the last couple of interviews that he did before he announced the book, he would, you know, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about that. No, I'm not. I'm not at liberty to talk about those things, so on and so forth. But yet, now all of a sudden, all that stuff he wasn't at liberty to talk about is going to be in his book. 
It exactly. Just, yeah. It's like, come on, you know, I mean, and I've, you know, I, 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 I can't. Like, do- yeah. <laughs> and it's like, again, I don't begrudge a man for trying to make some money. I get no. that. But when it's something important like this, like you're saying, I, I just, I don't think we should, we should be holding that. No, no, absolutely not. Not with this. You know what I mean? Just yeah. think about Which it. Which was his, his biggest bitch was that the government was holding it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I was like, come on, bro. Like, and listen, on, I, <laughs> I tell you, listen, I'll tell you from, I, I can't devolve. I, I'm not going to go too into this because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to piss off the wrong people. <laughs> right. But um, I will try to get to the gist of this. I, you know, I've had personal interactions with him. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, he he actually personally reached out to me when he heard about the uh, rubber duck footage and the A10 and all that. And from personal experience, you know, back and forth and, you know, messages, direct messages with him. You know, I saw I personally saw a side that he doesn't show to the world. You understand? And me seeing that and the th- some of the things that he was kind of uh I, I guess you could say doing to me or kind of like leaving me hanging after, you know, making me feel like, okay, yes, this footage is, I want to see this footage. And then all of a sudden leaving me high and dry for months after, you know, constant promises and promises like, bro, I ended up, I ended up actually telling him, listen, like, are you fucking with me or what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I did ask him, I, I, he, he wasn't too happy about it, you know? <laughs> but I did say it. I'm like, bro, if you don't want to, if you don't, if you don't want to talk, just fucking say it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to fucking get upset, but stop being around the bush. You, you know, you, you say one thing one minute, you're ready to put me on CNN in one phone call. And then the next thing you know, you know, things start to change. And I, and I said to myself, hold on a second, something's not right here. And you know, it, 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 it gets, you know, it's more st- to it, but from personal experience, there's, there's something about the guy that I just can't, I can't trust him like well, that. Well, you know, you heard uh, Greer came out um, back in like, uh, what was it, like October or September, something like that, talking about how his lawyer, right, the main activist lawyer guy that's always oh, yeah. with Greer with the curly white hair, that he was going to be representing Elizondo uh, in his case against the government for that defamation. Issue. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just, I wonder, you know, we heard that from Greer. Hey, this is okay. You know, uh, I've been talking with Elizondo and he's actually going to be coming over to our side of the camp and all this kind of stuff. And then, and then really nothing else has ever been said or heard anything else about it. So, yeah, we haven't had any Greer State of the Union addresses on YouTube in a minute. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. I, me personally, at the beginning when I first heard of Lou, I was you know really excited because of someone moving forward. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's just like I said, you know, from personal interactions and and things that I saw that you know behind the scenes, I, I just I can't trust him. You know, well, it's saying? the same thing with Doty. You know, he he. It makes you wonder if he's another Richard Doty. You know, it's like yeah, is yes. he lying to us even now? Because you can't trust Richard Doty. To save your life i mean you know no matter what and he and he'll admit it like you can't i could be lying to you i don't know yeah. <laughs> and i mean lou essentially worked for a similar organization so it's like is this all part of that narrative we yes. don't know we don't see then that's a, that's another thing you know i had someone I, unfortunately once again i can't you know <laughs> no, that's okay <laughs> but you know this individual confirmed with me in the conversation that um you know the the suspicions and the the things I was raising up, the questions I was ra- you know bringing up in regards to you know this um, that that were valid. He he confirmed this with me, and this is an individual that I know I can I can trust. Mm-hmm. So hearing that from it made me it kind of made me feel a little good. I was like, all right, I'm not crazy. Yeah, you know? right. Your intuition's so, on point. Yes, exactly. You know, and the the way I look at it now is, you know, like you like you. Um, stuff you you said you know this is someone who he was a part of the secrecy like people forget that you understand he ran this department right. and kept it hidden he kept the secret he was a part of it so he now part of like, the black budget dude like you know, <laughs> i mean think about that you know like so we're just supposed to just absolutely trust everything that he's saying his motives and all this like i mean it, it just after after a while seeing all, and putting all the pieces of the puzzle you start to see a different picture and then you say to yourself all right hold on 
yeah. something's not right. You know what well, I mean? Well, and then you know the fact that the DOD came out and said, you know, he actually never ran that that team and he was never a part of that department and all this kind of stuff. And and of course that could all be misinformation as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, it's just it's like we're caught up in a web of a web of something here. Caught up in a web of lies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you know, and just so, just so you know, I, I I gave him the opportunity to look at Rubber Duck before. I released it, and once again, he basically just, oh, oh, I'll, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you, and never did, you know. And then I'm not sure if you saw an interview that um, he had done with uh, Max Mox- Max Moskovich. Um, I, I forget it was. Um, oh my god, I forgot where, where it was that he was at. But anyways, he, I asked the question. I I told him about the footage. And stating that you know the organization that was uh, analyzing it uh, confirmed that you know it was legitimate or something like that. I made a comment in regards to that, and he he responded and said, "Oh yes, that he knows of it and knows that it's real and it, it, it is legitimate." When the video finally got released, uh, I believe it was the the Sun that uh, that did an article on it had all of that information. Had his 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 quote from that you know video, and the same day later on that same day, Lou Elizondo had them change that and the, it then stated that it was balloons, and I'm like, wait a minute, how is that possible if you actually never bothered to analyze the footage? So not just because mm-hmm. you saw two seconds of it, it's balloons. So that's when I that that was that was the second red flag for me, yeah. and I realized okay, he, now he's playing games you know what i'm saying and now yeah. i have more of a reason to not trust the guy so it, it, it you know it, it's it's a lot it's it gets deeper but you know i'm not gonna i know I, I, we all know you just cry yourself to sleep at night so. <laughs> <laughs> i mean no. it's just interesting you think about some of these go-to people back in the day and how in a sense they completely changed uh carl sagan's a perfect example you know, of a guy that was hardcore alien guy and then just out of the blue, completely changed his platform. And, you know, a lot of people think that he was silenced by the government and was paid to essentially become a disinformation agent and to push, you know, like, and all this different stuff. And it makes you wonder, you know, it just, it just makes you wonder because once you become that, that guy, you got a spotlight on you, you know, there's a different way. There's the guy who um, was kind of the main, you know, the rancher guy that found the crash at Roswell. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he, you know, one of the statements that he gave was that the government took him underground and, like, basically read him in <clears throat> on the craziness that's going on and, and how, you know, this is this really is a threat to the human race and all this kind of stuff. And after that, he changed his story. And so, um, you know, it, it really does kind of make you wonder – I mean, you know, we all we all just want to know what it is. But what if it is really not good for us? You know, yeah, so I, people get read in and they're like, oh, crap, I don't want to continue to spread this and encourage people to talk to aliens, you know, so. I, compl- I completely agree. I, I have said all that. That's that's one of the reasons why I say we're not ready, because, you know, we're, we're just captivated with the phenomena. We're captivated yeah. with the cool things that these crafts can do. But. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the same when that craft lands, the door opens, and an eight-foot praying mantis that can talk comes out right. and starts trying to, you know, communicate with you. I'm pretty sure half the freaking town is going to be on the other side of the freaking, you know, because they don't want to get anywhere near it. Or yeah, you know, or at it and, you know, get, yeah, guys show up in trucks with shotguns, you know. Yeah, so. you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> I, I honestly, I this is why I say no, we aren't ready. I've think i've gotten to the point now where i understand that when it comes to this phenomenon it's it's not it's not for the entirety of the human race no. it's for well, an individual who's yeah paying attention and you know that that to me is it's about the individual and, I, and I think that's why there hasn't been such a, a worldwide thing because we've had proof of things for years and years and years and years but it's just like you said it's it's not for the entire world well, and I, you know, something that I uh, that I was thinking about the other day is um, if I was given the keys to the kingdom, right? If I was read in and knew everything that was going on, and 
knew the truth of it all, met an alien, shook his hand, the whole kit and caboodle. What would my life be like? I'd be a pretty lonely person because I'd want to tell everybody that that's the, that's the case, but nobody's going to believe me. I'm going to get locked away in a padded room somewhere. So, I mean, you know, but also on an individual level, be careful what you ask for too. So perfect, perfect example of that is the movie. uh, Don't look up. Oh, look, you know, with the way to look up. Yeah. Like I thought that was brilliant and how they did it because it captured the the essence of what people are like right now, you know, and if a situation like that really occurred, you know, no one is going to believe it until the damn rock is right about to hit. And they're like, oh, shit, this is real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's so Spoiler sad alert. to think that this is where <laughs> – it's so sad to think that this is where we've gotten to yeah. as, as a society, as a, as a race, you know, where we can't trust anything anybody says. We're questioning no, everything. Not where, even science. I mean, that's why I brought up the yeah. flat earther syndrome earlier. The whole concept of flat earther, these people that say, I don't believe it because <clears throat> I have not seen – the earth from outer space therefore i can't trust it and that applies to so many people it may not be flat earth for them it may be ghosts it it may be jesus it may be pineapple on pizza i don't know it's it's just you know there are just a there's a set amount and it's a growing number of people that say until i see it with these two eyes and feel it with these hands that that doubting thomas thing i'm not gonna believe it even if science backs it up 100 yeah. because but, now we've got different scientists you know like the creationist scientist uh, ken ham coming out and refuting science with science you know and other scientists that have uh, a religious viewpoint or a different type of viewpoint that are that are well, you, going against even, science even neil degrasse tyson uh, is you know kind of laughed off the whole notion of uaps when the government first Mm-hmm. He's trying the, so hard to be Carl Sagan, man. Don't don't even get me started on him, yeah. man. I used to I used to love the guy. Again, yes, yeah, same. Too. We yeah. I looked up him. to him, and then when he came out with that and tried to be fun, I was like, "Go suck a dick." And he he does it all the time. <laughs> he just did a, a TikTok the other day I was <clears> watching <throat> where he was making fun of people that believe in aliens again. And you know I'm what like, I'm saying? Like, let it go. I mean, it's, he's that's why I, 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 he's he gets along well with Bill Nye, the science guy, because they're <laughs> both. Uh, absolute morons when it comes. I, it's, it's unbelievable <laughs> to think how someone so intelligent could be such an idiot at the same time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, well, because for a lot of those guys, science is their religion. So if it if it can't be proven in science, if they if they can't record it, measure it, calculate it, you know, predict its its, its existence, then it doesn't. But see, they, 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 I'm glad you brought that up because you literally just pointed out that the, the, one of the biggest flaws of humanity when it comes to some you know things like this we feel that we know everything and we haven't even left this goddamn rock no. we haven't <laughs> left this little tiny rock floating around a star that's massive but is just as tiny next to some of the biggest stars Why? we fucking know what's out there because we did some math you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we we haven't some- even discovered all of our ocean yet. Like, right. you know what we're, I'm we're- <laughs> like, well, there are parts of the land we haven't been to. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, and then, and it's just like, uh, it's unbelievable. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because, you know, these are the people that, that, that those who, you know, don't know any better look to. You understand? Yeah. Like, like they look at these people because of their degrees and you know the stature that they hold and all this stuff that they know. They went to school at this place, and blah blah blah. But that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. You know what I'm saying? You could go to the best school in the world and come out being the biggest moron ever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Because you don't have the mental capacity to look past what you know uh, to, to to look outside of the box. You know, you're stuck with your blinders they on. They forgot. They forgot that that's the biggest part of science is questioning yes. and discovery. Like that all the laws and everything that you're so proud of that you quote all the time, those weren't laws at one point. Had some, it had Galileo not said, screw the church, you know, we wouldn't know the things we know and so on and so forth. And it's like, guys, you forget about discovery too. It's okay to say, hey, there's an infinite number of of possibilities out there in an infinite universe that alien life 
could be one of them. Here's how it could happen. And, and also, and, nope. in, in, intelligent alien life far beyond our comprehension of intelligence, too. I mean, and not only that, but you know, you, you, your science is based off of this, the, the planet's environment. You yes. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You're basing all of our information, all of our knowledge is based off of this one rock, right. this one dome, this environment in here. Right. Who knows if a planet orbiting a dual star system exhibits different physics? Right. Yeah. Or something else that we've never seen. We've never seen before. That that's where yeah. our that's where our science always you know it, it it we we fall short. We 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 can never move forward from that because we 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 can't think that way. You understand what I'm saying? It's like yeah. one of the most important things about all this is imagination. If you don't have it, then how far are you going to get? Yeah. If you can't if you can't let your imagination go and, and, and just you know think of these possibilities and you're li- you right there you already failed because you're limiting yep. what you can what what you, where you could reach you're limiting your reach you understand and that's you know that's that's the biggest problem we have you know yeah you know, I, I completely like agree yeah that, that's why I said it's about you know it's the individual you know that's and your I don't knows aren't good enough for me and you're saying well there's a possibility that it's a balloon so therefore it can't be an alien spacecraft no. Um, you know? There's a possibility it's an alien spacecraft, so therefore it can't be your damn balloon. Okay, like that works the same way on my side. If I it's, wanted, it to don't do. make no, like I'll give you an example, right? Um, with 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 rubber duck. So it was analyzed by a ton of people, right? Mick West, all these people say it was balloons or uh, a drone carrying drugs and blah blah blah, all this crap, right? Long story short, um, just so you know, my source finally came you know and told me that he's ready to come forward oh awesome yeah because uh he was afraid of doing it before because of you know his retirement he didn't want it to interfere with that so this was only about maybe three or four days ago that he informed me of this and um we're we're working on ways of you know getting his story out there properly yeah and one of the individuals um he spoke to an individual that had done an analysis on the video that came to a conclusion that it was a parachute or a latex balloon. And he was adamant, like that was it because he had a, a um, he had a specialist, a, a friend of his on the show that, you know, had many years of experience with FLIR and convinced him that that's what it was, right? He had a conversation with my source for about maybe 15, 20 minutes. And he was like, Quit. he goes, okay, so I don't think this is a balloon anymore. <laughs> because, you know, I, and I told him, I said, look, you have to understand, you know, you can't, these, these are individuals who were trained to observe. That is right. their job is right. to observe. You understand? They are looking through cameras every single day. They have to discern what is what how to distinguish, you know, uh, uh, and a friend from foe, all that stuff. They're trained observers. So if there is a video that no one can explain because they have no idea what it could be, then take it from the people who are trained to look at things that the object was unidentified. You understand? Right. And if it was, and I argued with him and I told him, and, and my source confirmed it, if it was a drug a parachute with a, with, with a bag of drugs or a drone or whatever. I'm like, you think the Department of Homeland Security is just going to ignore it and go about their business? Right. Their job is to go get that shit, you right. know? <laughs> They're not going to circulate it around departments trying to figure out what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Yeah. You know, that's just like, it doesn't make any sense. So finally, you know, this individual admitted, oh, you know what, now that I'm hearing his side, I, I'm I'm second guessing that, that, that theory. I'm, you know, because you're now listening, you're hearing it from from you know the, how they say the horse's mouth or whatever, right? Yeah, from the source. So this is why I was kind of happy that he finally decided to come forward and talk, because it clarifies a lot. And he's a very smart individual. He's extremely uh, um, knowledgeable. He has, I mean, he showed me all his uh, degrees and certificates, and I mean, the guy is he, he's done a lot. He's done a lot. So I, I take his word for it. And if the guy tells me he has no idea what it is, I'm yeah. going to go, okay, this is unidentified. You understand? 
Well, you know, and it's always funny because everybody who, um, you know, you know, looks at the video, examines the video, tries to, you know, figure out what it is. We're always comparing it to things we know, right? We're always saying, well, that's a balloon. That's a drone. It's an airplane. It's a parachute. Again, back to your comment around imagination. Nobody is really willing to step out on a limb and say, well, it, it only kind of moves like a balloon but it's not really shaped like a balloon it doesn't exhibit any other factors like a balloon it just kind of maybe moves like a balloon in this one one minute clip out of the entire 40 minute clip mm -hmm. you know it's just it, but it you know like stefan said but once they say that there's a possibility that it's that then everything else is gone they've decided no nope, it's yeah. just a balloon it's just a drone it's just a parachute it's 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 so it's one of the most frustrating things ever when it comes to this Cause it's like, come on, you know, like how, what, 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 how, what do, what do we need to do? You know, like what, what needs to be put out there for someone to be like, okay, this is, this is it. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I get, I go back to, you know, the, 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 what happened in, in the, uh, with Twitter when it was released, like you, you had finally footage that is more than one minute long comes out yeah. and it's staying clear with all the information you need yep. and before even analyzing. I mean, it was like a massive shitstorm. It's like, why, you know, like I just, it, it, it boggles the mind. Yeah. You know, and, and, and honestly, it doesn't give me a good outlook for the future of the subject in, 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 in all honesty, you know what I mean? Because it's like, all right, what, where do we go? You know, what is, what is ever going to be good enough for anybody? You know, well, it's, it, it's like, we you know, we talk about it a lot, um, that, uh, you know, Stefan and I have had experiences, lots of experiences and we share them on our podcasts and our other places, but you know, the experience that you have, we, we talked about earlier, right? The experience that you have is for you. Um, the sharing it publicly is just to let other people know who have experiences that they're not alone. Um, but you know, it, it's not to try to like, I, I don't share my experience to convince anyone that there are UFOs, UAP, whatever you want to call them, that there's extraterrestrial collab. I don't, I don't share it to convince anybody. I share it because I want other people to know that if you've had an experience, you're not alone. Right. Exactly. And that's, and, and I think that's, you know, what people who are, are attacking have to realize is that. This is not an argument where we're trying to convince you of anything. We're just sharing information so that people who have had similar experiences can feel a part of a community of people who have had experiences rather than to feel like they're alone in a corner somewhere. Oh, well, that's that's why I'm the way that's why I'm so <laughs> I'm so open and uh, colorful with my words when it comes to these, <laughs> because I, I mean, you know, I, I, I've. I come from that, you understand? Like, I I know what that's like. I mean, I, I lived my entire, damn near my entire life experiencing that, you understand? And it gets to the point where you just get tired of it, you know? And, and you know, I, I've, I've had individuals tell me, oh, you know, ignore it or turn the other cheek or, you know, don't, 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 uh, don't, don't feed into it. But then I say to myself, well, if you don't stand up to it, then when is it ever gonna fucking stop? Yeah, right. well, it's a, well, it's like a bully at that point, right? I mean, it, exactly. Like people are bullying you for something you believe in. So. Exactly, you know. And and the thing is, to me, you know, that's that's that was my driving point when I decided to start my page. Excuse me, because I said to myself, if I'm feeling this way, I know there's a ton of other people, tons, not only feeling that, but. I've actually gone through with doing things to themselves because of that, mm -hmm. because they felt like there was no one else they could talk to or turn to or, and, and I know what it is to feel absolutely alone when it comes to this. It's a horrible fucking feeling, especially when you see something that is not supposed to exist, but there it was right in front of your eyes. Right. So you saw it from up close and it's like your, your whole world just, you know, goes, goes upside yeah. down, you know? Yeah. And I don't have patience for people who who bully. And I'll I'll, I'll know. straight out tell them, you know, with, without hesitation, go fuck yourself. You know, I, I have twenty. What is it? Twenty one. It just went down now. Twenty one four. 
followers on, on Instagram. I should be, if I didn't do this at 26 or 25, because I blocked that many. Mm. I've literally blocked over 4,000 people because I just don't have time for that bullshit. Yeah. I don't want it infecting my fucking page. That's you know? right. Well, it's infecting your life, right? I mean, it's exactly, you know, exactly. So I want, that's why I do it. You know, people say, oh, leave them, let them talk. No, I don't want that because no. then the people who are really there for that information are now being infected by that shit too. And they're going to feel some kind of way, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, you, act, you know, I, I tell my kids all the time, you know, consequences are, you know, actions have consequences. So you act out, you act a fool on social media. There's nothing that says that I have to, you know, keep you as a follower. So goodbye. Exactly. So that's, that's been my, uh, that's been my motto now since I started. <laughs> block, block. <laughs> Good for you for keeping your head on, man, because yeah. it's, it's not an easy thing. I mean, at all. And for you to still be open on here and still, you know, just coming on our show and still saying, hey, I'm not backing down. This is what I believe. This is where it is after all the ridicule and, and the weirdness and the craziness that's happened lately. Like, kudos to you, sir, because not everybody could handle that. Some people do just fade on out like Homer into that bush. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You know, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, you know, after after that whole after that whole Twitter thing, you know, it, it, it did feel like that. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you because it got it, once once I saw that, you know, like I, I I got a glimpse of of the biggest issue with this with this whole you know uh, direction, this whole subject, and it, it completely just like drained me because I said to myself, why are we even bothering with this bullshit? Yeah. If there's, so many of these assholes out there you yeah. know what i'm saying like why what's the point you know it, it, it just feels like it, it's a it's a losing battle you know because there's you you're you're talking about eight billion people on the planet and only a hundred thousand of them are seen because and the rest are freaking batshit crazy you know what i mean but make you feel like you're batshit crazy you know <laughs> how do you yeah. convince a planet this is why i finally got to that point where i said you know what? I, you know, it's, it was like an eye-opening moment. This isn't about the entire planet. This is about reaching out to the individuals who are willing yeah. to accept this, who are willing to open their minds to that. Because the way I look at it, you know, after all of this, the way I see it is, if you're if you're willing to open up to the possibilities that that you know you're, you're not privy to in, in your reality, that you're able to accept what you don't understand then maybe that assists you when your time comes to no longer be around into passing on to the next you know yep. phase of your life because what if i mean honestly if you think about it it makes a lot of sense what if you died tomorrow and you're faced with a new reality that you had absolutely no idea was real yep. You could you could literally deny it and be stuck, and maybe that is where a ghost comes from. Yeah, I was gonna say Someone the same who just thing. really can't accept it, and that 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 attachment to that reality is so powerful mm -hmm. that it won't let them go forward. But if you're open minded and you can accept these things, and you've been that way your whole life, when it, you're really faced with it, you you can say, you know what? Okay, I can take that step forward to see what happens when I go through yeah. that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So that's why that's why I've come to that conclusion that it's about it's about you, the person, what you're able to uh, uh, accept, what you're able to right. You know, take in and, and say, you know, what the possibility is there. You know. Yeah, maybe belief belief on the personal level, right? Not yeah. belief on the holistic. Yeah, that's what I yeah. think. Honestly. Yeah, oh, I agree. And you know, it's something you know, talk about the whole world. I mean, I I, I do like that uh, that. The one thing that I like about about new uh, and improved Greer is um, is his his idea that if just one percent of the world were to med were to meditate uh, on a consistent basis, that it would you know kind of raise or change the overall vibration and like sort of like a, a ripple effect or you know uh, one drop of, of oil in, in a in a thing of water, you know it can really really affect the entire thing of water. So um, you know it's kind of the same thing I think with with people who have their own experiences is the more people who have their own experiences and are willing to open their minds to what that means, right. To what that That's entails, what 
um, the more people who can do that on a personal level, the overall world will be affected because of it. So again, you know, personal experiences and personal beliefs will change the world. Oh yeah, I, I, I agree, you know, and I also, another thing I always, you know, mentioned is, you know, it, it, it our, our children are also a massive, massive, uh, uh, how you could say, um, oh, man, I just had the word. They, they, they are, they are the number one, I guess you could say, um, I, I just had it. I just had it in my in my head of how I was gonna say it. It just slipped. Um, they're let's just in, in layman's terms. They're important. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're they. You know because okay. If you you think about the incidents with um, in Australia with the the the, the UFO oh, yeah. incident with the school the ones and, that uh, John Mack investigated. Yeah, in Zimbabwe yeah. and um, yeah. the one in the UK, somewhere in the UK. I forget the name of it. Um, you know. Rogan had asked a question to um, I forget that producer, the director's name that did uh, the phenomenon. He asked him why these ETs were visiting these children, you know, and they were like, oh, he was like, oh, did they, they not realize that they're kids or whatever? And you know, I'm listening to this and I'm like, I was kind of I like Rogan because I know he's about this whole thing. But <laughs> yeah. that question kind of got me a little frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm saying to myself, like, you know, they're coming to the children. If you think about it, because they are our future. You understand what I'm saying? They are the ones that if you can, if you can plant that seed of of you know uh, a real of that reality into that kid's mind, it's gonna well and gonna and they're be, unencumbered. And I mean, yeah. they have not been bullied down by society to what is real and what isn't real yet. Um, and their eyes yeah. aren't so fixed on what they're told yet. They can still, you know, you always hear those stories that kids can see things that adults can't see. Exactly. And so I would absolutely go to kids before I would exactly. go to some yeah, I mean, adult that's going to be like, mm, 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 you're a daemon. So it sounds like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit like, I don't know if you watch the show Lock and Key on uh, Netflix, but, you know, adults forget magic. So once they turn 18, they can no longer remember magic. And it's kind of the same way in our community, right? I mean, yeah. when you grow up, you, for some reason, you can't accept that there might be the possibility of magic in the world. But kids still have that. Yep. And so you're right. I mean, you plant the seed. They, they're not encumbered. All, all the stuff that was just said, I mean, it makes the most sense uh, to go and talk to the kids first. Also, uh, makes me think of that song, you know, I believe the children are... Future. I was thinking about yeah. that, too. <laughs> Sex <laughs> chocolate, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I think this, I, honestly, I think what we're at right now is a really, really, really important point in our existence because we've finally gotten to that. We've finally gotten to a point where we can talk about things like this and, and it's a little yeah. more, uh, you know, accepting now. Yeah. And that's important for that same reason because yeah. now we can implement this and we can teach this and, and, and open our children's minds and you don't know what that can bring. Yeah. On to the future. And, and I do. I'm glad for social media and YouTube and podcasts because before it was like a coast to coast is what you had. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like now anybody can talk about this stuff. You don't have to just be some special guy that gets invited to coast to coast or on, on, on unsolved mysteries or something like that. The mm -hmm. conversation is indeed much larger. And I do like that. Yeah, you know, and I'm waiting for the day that uh, some college offers a UAP course. Oh, that would be that would be interesting. <laughs> well, like I said, I was already, I was surprised that I got that message from the you know the the the, the French teacher and um, yeah, you know on Instagram, which that was, so. I was I was excited about that. It it made me feel good that it was actually being brought up in school. You know. Yeah. yeah. And it is cool. I mean, and you are seeing like a lot of the news stories because of disclosure and stuff like that, that's getting closer and all the stuff that's going on. They're showing a lot more polls of, you know, believers and things like that. And it has significantly risen, you know, um, the younger generation, you know, from Gen Xers down, millennials, Zs and stuff like that. They are far more open to be believers into mm -hmm. this than the boomers and the silent generation were before, you mm -hmm. know, so... 
because they had decades of so much disinformation. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so Andy, I want to thank you again for coming on. Um, let me give you an opportunity for uh, let people know where they can find you. You know, uh, out there in the socials or whatever the case may be. Um, the inst- Instagram and YouTube are the, t- the only two I really use. <laughs> um, NYUAP discussion for both. That's the that's the name I use. Awesome. Great. And if you guys have uh, found this on our Facebook page, uh, you'll notice the link there for both of those uh, on this post as well. Uh, and you know, so make sure yeah. to. Uh, subscribe and all that stuff to the nyuap discussion because <laughs> it's something else man andy thank you so much dude this t- this hour flew by way too quick for me <laughs> um no man. it was a pleasure guys it was a pleasure yeah, we would much. love to have you come back on and just chat some more down the yeah. road dude because like i said this hour flew by way too quick I, we could shoot the breeze for a long time about this stuff i'm, I'm down I, I i enjoyed it i always enjoy conversations like this Thank you, Andy, dude. Man, Anytime. great, great conversation. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, it's got me all jazzed up for the rest of the evening. Me so. too. Hashtag call me, Andy. Um, reach out. We'd love to chat again. Uh, do not be surprised if we have this dude on before the year is out again. Because yeah. I enjoyed the shit out of you, Andy. And I love your tenacity uh and your sense of humor uh as well as your passion uh it's, it's good to see folks like that in our community Jeez, get a room i know i said hashtag call me um but no seriously love that man great conversation yep. much appreciated um so uh if you haven't yet get your butt to the youtube page to the instagram page and follow this man uh lots of great reliable information <laughs> yeah really i mean you know there's a lot of the, we've talked about it when we when were talking about it but i mean there are a lot of junk sightings and stuff that are posted on instagram and twitter by a bunch of accounts you know andy tries to make sure that he's putting good stuff out there so. yeah he's vetting that and that and that's something that's important because not a lot of folks do that they just put whatever is out there whatever's clever yeah and it turns out to be you know the mcpherson tape so just saying <laughs> um, which is on shutter right now you can watch it it's pretty interesting uh anywho uh we'll go ahead and get wrapped up josh uh i'm just like i said i'm jazzed i'm still jazzed yeah. and you know the we talked to him a minute ago and it was great um so uh but just a reminder again go to fearscapepodcast.com slash support or fearscapepodcast.com slash store uh we've got a lot of great new designs on our uh on our merch store uh lots of fun uh bigfoot stuff seems we had a yep. really fun bigfoot sighting earlier and, and fun alien stuff all kinds of just neat stuff just random shirts stuff. On there, we got all kinds stuff. of stuff we got all kinds of stuff there's no excuse if you want to find it it's there or ask us i'll make it for you <laughs> whatever you yeah. want man. whatever you Josh want. needs a haircut whatever you want um <laughs> but no thank you guys so much i want to get to uh the uh the segment that i love the most more than anything um because it's a reminder that you are not alone uh so let's get into our final segment of the evening which is encounters from the fearscape <laughs> All right, Josh, uh, this one comes from further than the UK this week. This this encounter from the Fearscape comes from Greece, the country, ah. not the movie, uh, which sucks. Greece too, hashtag all the way, um, is uh, from Greece, from a listener named Vasiliki. Uh, and um, it's, it's a good one. I'm just going to leave it at that as I do because I don't want to get spoiler alert. It's more fun to listen. So this is uh, the the story, uh, the encounter from the Fearscape from Basiliki from Greece. From Greece, not Greece. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Briss is a whole different thing. Uh, anyways, here we go. So I've had a few experiences, but two are the most memorable ones. The first one I had was about a black humanoid figure walking towards me inside an empty house. It has almost floor to ceiling windows on the front and I said humanoid because while it was shaped like a man, it was out of proportion and kind of fuzzy around the edges. 
this house is considered to be cursed because it was built on an old threshing floor and that's a big no-no there. I was visiting family uh, in Greece there. Uh, the owners died in a span of two years of each other. The other one that I experienced, I was with two friends of mine and we were walking on an empty neighborhood street and suddenly, while it was a sunny afternoon, uh, it became like it was about to rain in a matter of seconds and everything was in slow motion. Like the sound of our voices were weird, like we were underwater and we were even laughing when it happened because it sounded so odd. And we saw this black figure running past us and it touched me on the shoulder. Now this didn't last more than 10 seconds, I guess, but it felt like way more because of the slow motion feeling as we were moving around slow-mo, this thing was moving at a normal speed. Both of my friends saw this and felt everything that I did. And we were scared to tell you the truth. I have no idea what that was or the first one was, but we've all got some sort of theory. Shadow people, man. Yeah. What's, What's crazy that? to me is the slow motion things. I, I feel like we've experienced yeah. throughout our lives similar moments like that. Sometimes my my um <sighs> night hag syndrome stuff feels that way. It's not just you know my eye my body that can't move my brain moves slow but yeah, yeah. And when those things are moving at regular speed and everything else is moving slow it's weird yeah i mean it makes me think of like maybe that has something to do with time loss the time loss experience yeah maybe you know that like things are just moving really fast and it so it feels like you have lost time because your brain can't process how things are moving so fast i don't know yeah, I don't know. It's very, very interesting. Thank you, uh, Vasiliki, and I apologize if I mispronounced your name, but I think it's beautiful. Um, but thank you for sharing that. Um, two experiences in one go, man. Like, uh, nothing nothing like seeing black figures or shadow figures or humanoids that are not shaped correctly. There's nothing, yeah. <laughs> nothing like it. So please share those stories with us. You can send those to fearscapepodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on any of our socials at Fearscape Pod or even just go to fearscapepodcast.com and submit a sighting. Uh, we would love to share those encounters with everyone else because again, we want you all to know you're not alone. You're not. You're not. You're not. We have our, you know, we have our creepy catch up. And this is your opportunity to share your creepy ketchup. So, and I always love when Santosh comes on because he's like, I've got five months worth of creepy ketchup yeah, really. I want to share with you guys. And I'm like, we do astral stew and you never talk about it. Because <laughs> he wants the blanket huggers personally to hear it. And I love that. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's, that's all we got today, Josh. Uh, again, make sure to follow the NY UAP discussion on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, make sure to follow us on all of our social medias. Make sure you guys are checking out the debriefs tech talk on the debrief.org or just yep. simply put in the debrief tech talk into YouTube. You'll find us there. We we've got uh, fun stuff going on there with our new show tech talk. It's a lot of fun and we have to shamelessly plug it. We have to. We have it's, to. I think, it's, I think it's in the contract. It is. It's in our Fearscape contract. Yeah. <laughs> anything we do outside of Fearscape, we have to. Promote. We have to plug. Yeah. We have to promote on here. I've been petting Kenobi, my dog. It, oh, uh, it's in yeah. The contract. Okay. I gotta let you know. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff. Know. No, but seriously, go to debrief.org uh, and check out all the great news articles they got going on there uh, and our stuff there. We're really, really excited. Uh, but well, let's go ahead and get out of here, Josh. It's been a great night. I already miss you. And I ain't even, even said goodbye yet. Goodbye. No. Bye, love. Goodbye, love. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you guys right. so much for listening <laughs> to the Fearscape Paranormal here on the Fearscape Media Network. Uh, my name is Josh Rutledge, and keep your eyes on the skies. And this has been Stefan. The truth is now. I finally got to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, folks, hold your blankets extra tight because things tend to get spooky when you're listening to Fearscape. Good night, everybody. Good night.
We hope you have enjoyed this guidepost on the road of high strangeness with us. And we thank you, as always, for listening and joining our caravan to the weird and unknown. Please consider supporting us as we continue our journey to find the answers we all seek. Fearscapepodcast.com forward slash support.